hearing resumed. Andito na po yung ano, report ng ating secretariat. Uh, linawin ko lang po, 85 members ang present, 44 po pala yung majority na kailangan. So, ang nag-yes, 70. Ang nag-no, 11. Dalawang ang nag-inhibit, isang nag-abstain. Yun, yun ang total. So, 70 ang yes, 11 ang no. Dalawa nag-inhibit, isang nag-abstain. The resolution to deny ABS-CBN's franchise application is hereby adopted. Any objections? Hearing none. Motion is approved. Hello, Naked Political Junkies. This is John R.G. Podcasting from Los Angeles. Joined by Jeff Podcasting from Dublin and Emil Podcasting from Manila. We are also joined by Carl and Rigel, our team, Naked Politics Podcast. Uh, diretso na tayo. Uh, what's next for ABS-CBN? Yesterday, nagkaroon naglabas tayo ng briefer about ano nangyari doon sa committee deliberation ng Committee on Franchise. Bakit nangyari to? Somehow explaining what are the other options for ABS-CBN. So, this morning, presidential spokesperson on Harry Roque said na itong decision ng Committee on Legislative Franchises ay was a decision supported by the people because the congressman represents the people. So, what do you think about it? We recently lumabas na survey ng SWS about this and at, nagsasabi yun na hindi totoo yung sinabi ni spokesperson Harry Roque. So, sabi sa survey, um, three out of four Filipinos believe that the franchise of ABS-CBN should be removed and around uh, 56% said na it's an attack to the press so, but how recent is this survey? It was conducted July 3 to 6. So, so very week ago. At uh, saka ito yung time na kasagsaga ng mga hearings about ABS-CBN, right? So saan nang gagaling si spokesperson Roque? So siguro he took it literally na representative of the people yung mga nasa Congress. So <laughs> without asking the people, no, it's not true. No, it okay. you're going to the survey. Yeah, Carl. I mean, kayo, Carl Rigel, kayo yung mga, kayo yung mga mas babad sa social media. Hindi ba pa Baka naman, uh, some of these people, alam mo yun, we're living on a bubble. Hindi natin, ang nakikita lang natin yung mga sinasabi ng mga friends natin who think alike. But uh, what's in social media? Ano bang, ano bang pulso, especially sa inyo at your age level? Do they care? Uh, importante ba to sa kanila? Ay, sabi nga ni Bato, hindi naman nakapiktado, so okay lang. Ganun ba ang, ang general attitude ng mga ng mga tao about the, the shutdown? The before, a lot were neutral or apolitical. This is the time that politics actually affects them. Before, the politics it's so boring. Ayaw namin magsali. And now, COVID is affecting all of us. And they see these statements from Bato, from Harry Roque, from Duterte himself. If you go to Twitter, most of our agents, nandun sila and they're speaking out their mind. They're they're more than emotionally driven to express their, their hatred toward the government handling of this situation. Raja, do you agree with that? Kung talagang, kung talagang may outpouring or may backlash kung decision na to, this isn't the first time na ginawa to, di ba? Ginawa to ni Duterte sa inquiry. They threatened the Rupino Prieto family, di ba? Kaya ibinenta ng, ng Prieto family ang inquirer to Ramon Ang. And then, they did it to, to Rappler. Pero kinakasuhan si, si Maria Ressa ng, ng, ng libel. I mean, not the government, but obviously, somehow with the machination of the government. So, kung may backlash and people appreciate press freedom, anong pinagkaiba nitong first two cases ng inquirer, ng, ng Rappler, with ABS-CBN? I think yung pinaka-difference lang niya is accessibility. Because based on my observation, lalo na nung nagkaroon ng issues ang Raptor and Maria Ressa. From our age group, it's mostly Hume students that actually cared about the issue. It's only majority of these people who are um, consuming content from Raptor. And it's the same thing with Inquirer. Pero kasi ABS-CBN is not just a new segment. It's also several different um, sub-companies, like um, sub-groups as well. That, does, that doesn't just include TV and radio. There's also a lot of different things. Like especially, it touches on a lot of industries, not just acting, nor shows but also it actually covers a huge amount of jobs especially in the media industry which is why I think our youth nowadays especially I, I, it's getting so much hate and the hate actually amplifies because of the fact that it's currently being done on in the context of we are in a pandemic and I, I think that most of what people or at least in our age group like uh, I think what they ask more I mean what they ask about the issue is that why are they doing it 
right now. It doesn't really matter if they agree or not. Like the most common question that our age group asks is, why are they doing it now, and how is this related into fixing what is the most, what is the biggest problem that we have? Like, is it relative to pa- the pandemic? And the always the answer is always it's not relative to the pandemic. It actually it worsens the position of everyone in the pandemic. Because if, if a lot of people are losing jobs nowadays, even more, lalo na kasi ABS-CBN is shut down. What actions are, kung irritated ka, anong, anong actions ang gagawin mo? But we'll, we'll discuss that later. Emil, uh, si Senator Laxon issued a statement earlier saying uh, he was praising Duterte but at the same time, it was a silent sunto. Parang sinasabi niya na hindi kailangan ni Duterte na magbigay ng signal sa mga congressman, binasa ng mga congressman yung body language ni Duterte at obviously, sinasabi din ni Harry Roque that they, hindi naman nila neutral ang palasyo, di ba? But obviously, hindi naman talaga neutral. But if you were speaker kay Tano, would you have done it differently kung talagang may backlash na ganito at galit yung tao? I mean, people are saying now that we we have to look at 2022 and vote out these people. Pero, oh, wag muna yun. Pero yun nga, if you were speaker kay Tano, would you have done it differently? Pwede bang mas maayos tong naging diskarte nila kung ang talagang galit? Uh, other than that, the argument of speaker kay Tano in shutting down ABS-CBN, it, it, it's a fight against the oligarchy. Ganon din yung mga narrative at nila Marcoleta, nila Boyin Rimulia, nila Mike Pensor. So, magpalagay natin sincere sila doon sa mga sinasabi nila. But is that the way to do it? Uh, first, doon sa issue kay, uh, kay Speaker Keta, no? uh, what they did to ABS-CBN to, uh, is really politically risky. I mean, because it's ABS-CBN. Remember that Speaker Alan Keta, no? uh, during the first uh, first moments of this of this event, he, uh, he appeared to be siding uh, with ABS-CBN. SCBN, di ba? At first, uh, there was a clash between uh, Speaker Cayetano and uh, Solicitor General. Uh, uh, with Kalida. Ita Solicitor, uh, Kalida, yes. And it appears then that it was in fact uh, Kalida uh, na, uh, na naging meet siya na itong hearing na to, di ba? And mm-hmm. ang, ang, ang basa natin doon is that uh, Kalida independently moved in order to uh, to cancel uh, uh, to cancel or to stop ABS-CBN. It's just that after that, kinuha na lang siya ni Cayetano sa Congress. So at first, parang uh, pro, uh, sumaside si Cayetano sa ABS-CBN. But eventually, uh, we, we saw right now that they killed uh, the franchise, uh, the, uh, the franchise application of of ABS-CBN. So uh, the way I see it, I felt that uh, Cayetano and his allies in Congress have reached a point of no return. Meaning to say, they have bullied ABS-CBN to the point that they really had to to make a, a TKO of ABS-CBN because kapag, pina, kapag pinapalag nila yung ABS-CBN, it will really impact them. Parang, uh, you have to, total, to totally crush your enemy. Uh, wag mo siyang bigyan ng chance na pumalag pa sa'yo kasi once na pumalag tong ABS-CBN, it will impact their political career, not only in 2022, but perhaps even even the political career of future Cayetanos. So, that, that's that's how I see it. Kasi, personally, I was surprised sa, sa nangyari sa Congress. Sa, but, if sa you were, but, to, but, thought, if were, but if you were speaker kay Tano, would you have done it differently, more strategically? O oh, ito na yun. Feeling ko ang naging strategy ni, uh, ni Alan Peter kay Tano is that he really went for the kill sa ABS. Kasi he had no choice. Diba? Okay. Kasi remember na basa na yung pangalan niya at first eh, pinakancel ni Kalida. Basang-basa mm-hmm. na yung pangalan niya noon. So hindi, hindi niya masasalba yung reputation niya, yung political future niya. Uh, kung kung magiging ano siya kung magiging neutral siya so so feeling ko talaga hindi na hindi na nila pinapalag yung ABS-CBN sa issue na to kaya talagang pinatay nila yung pinatay nila yung fan you must remember yung nagbutuhan lang the other day yung Committee on Legislative Franchise. So, pero yung naghearing dito, it's the Committee on Legislative Franchise and then the Committee on Good Government. There will be a second punch to ABS-CBN. At ang babana dyan, yung Committee on Good Government. Babanatan yung, yung, yung nga, yung oligarchs hand towards media and government and how Speaker Cayetano looked at it as a, a, a thief of the government. Diba? Yung, yung, that's the term that he used. Ako, just to answer it, I, I think 
ito, tapos na naman to, if I were speaker Cayetano, I would have done it differently. Kung may mga problema sila, halimbawa, sa paghawak ng mga Lopez, sa, kasi ang backlash dito yung sinasabi ni Rydger kanina, eh, di ba? At tatamaan yung labing isang, labing isang libong mga uh, mga empleyado, yung mga businesses na naka, nakapalibot sa ABS-CBN, no? and then advertising. So, yun pa yung mas concern ng mga, mga ibang tao. So, that, doon ang gagaling yung backlash, hindi talaga sa mga Lopez. Eh. Well, how, why do we care? Kahit naman mapasara ang ABS-CBN, mahihiga pa rin sa pera ang mga Lopez. They still have other businesses. Diba? Hindi naman sila kawawa dito. Ang kawawa dito yung mga simple empleyado. Pero, if I were speaker kay Tano, what I would have done is, hindi totally, hindi ko kagad gire-reject yung, yung renewal ng franchise ng ABS-CBN. Ang gagawin ko, I would line up a, a parang collateral suggestions or parang ito yung mga kailangan gawin ng ABS-CBN. It's either ibenta ng mga Lopez ang kanilang or ibabaan ng mga Lopez ang, kasi kasi pwede rin mo yung 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 company ownership or more than 50% talaga it's Lopez's di ba pwede nilang gawin na sabihin na babaan yung ownership ng mga Lopez sabihin na na dagdagan yung mga programa na dapat ganto ang tema or or more regulatory regulatory actions before they they accept before they give the renewal of the franchise. So, ang bola ngayon nasa ABS-CBN. Pag hindi tinanggap ng ABS-CBN yung mga gustong mangyari ng Kongreso, ang magsisisihin na, hindi na ang Kongreso, ang sisisihin na yung ABS-CBN. Bibigyan namin kayo, pero ito yung, ito yung gusto namin mangyari, ito nakita namin problema, ito yung solusyon na nakikita namin. Pero hindi yun ang ginawa ni, ni Speaker Cayetano. I think he could have done it better, na mas maayos, na walang backlash na ganito, pero you know, hindi yung thinking nila is the dirty thinking eh. You go for the kill, sabi mo nga. Okay, Jet. I'll go to you. Deserve ba to ng ABS-CBN? I'm not saying deserve ba to ng mga lopices. I mean, deserve ba to ng mga empleyado, ng mga artista, na, you know, pag, kagaya nga nung sinasabi ko, naalala ko noon, nung, nung, si, nung si General Bato was uh, uh, inimbita niyang showtime and may mga, may mga kasama pa siya mga police and he was welcomed like a hero na para bang nung mga first few days pa lang ng, ng administrasyon, ang dami nang namatay. Pero yun nga, he was, he was accepted and he was warmly embraced. And not just him, everyone in this administration. So do, do they deserve this? Parang ano ba? How do we, matutuwa ba tayo na nangyari to? O magagali tayo? O what? Your take dyan. At, at somehow, no, mer- meron sa akin na part na ano, hindi, hindi ako hindi ko sinasabing deserve nila. No? Pero at, at some point, at some part of it, I, because of them, no, a lot of people from ABS-CBN, from their entertainment uh, business, and even in their current affairs, are enablers of this administration. Diba? So, good example yung nga nasa showtime. Diba? Parang, uh, they use their influence to campaign for for the administration, di ba? I don't know, maybe uh, akala nila enough na yon for 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 them not to be targeted, no? Uh, it, maybe they thought it's a form of accommodation, di ba? You'll see the, the uh, rants from uh, several personalities from their news and current affairs na alam mong favoring yung, yung uh, administration. And maybe that's also part of their maybe th- thinking of compromise with, with the, the current administration to spare them no, from from these kind of things. Pero yun nga, it went on a different way, totally different way na nag, nag, bumalik lahat sa kanila lahat. No? So, uh, they campaigned for him, um, they, they gave him a platform uh, to campaign at para manalo. No? Kasi yung influence nila, ganun kalakas eh. So, I don't know what they're thinking now. No? Parang, parang ilan lang talaga yung mga umi yak ngayon ng mga artista. Yung may moral ascendancy na sabihin na we were wrong. Minsan yun nga, parang isipin mo, parang buti nga sa inyo. But I, of course, syempre, hindi lang si mga artista na to would live comfortably kahit mawala din naman ang ABS. Anyway, o oh, Carl, yung yung basis ng bias, naririnig mo nga na si Kuya Jack mo, nagsasabi, di ba, yung iba mga artista and even with people in current affairs na na, na pag pinahinggan mo yung attack na yun, I, I don't know kung, kung you were already political during the time of no Noy. Pero nung panahon ni Noynoy, nagreklamo din si Noynoy. Eh. There was a time he attended the TCMM, DCMM uh, parang anniversary and doon he lashed out on Noli Castro. So, yung bias ba? Is it 
bias against or prejudice ba sila against Duterte or, or it, it is to anyone who is in this administration, to whoever is in the administration. But we have to recognize the fact that going back to the era of Marcos, they were shut down. They have this history of being a critic or at least being a threat to providing this information to the public. I have this idea about this politician or that. So that adds up to the idea that the media is a threat to public officials all around. But in a way that they're trying to hold my public opinion on their own mindset. You will see that in the post of, for example, uh, the statement of Harry Roque or Pato, tapos yung picture nila nakaganon or yung parang nakaganon si Harry Roque. These are small yet effective ways of seeing that um, media outlets are somehow biased. Not outright, pero at least sending a message that this statement is ignorant the same way that the person who's saying that is also ignorant. Or na, somehow, they were, they remind them of how Marcos shut down um, ads even before and now they're uh, they're encountering a new dictator who's trying to shut them down as well. Wow, well, ang tapag ni Carl. Tinawag ka dictator si Duterte. Anyway, <laughs> Emil, Emil mm. uh, narinitin natin to, chilling effect. May chilling effect ba to? Ito pagkapasara ng, ng ABS-CBN? Well, in, on, on press freedom, sinasabi natin to. Pero, yun na, hindi naman ito yung una. Ginawa sa Inquirer, na, binenta ang Inquirer ng Prieto sa um, Tiramon Ang, and then ginagawa sa Rappler, and now ABS-CBN. So, chilling effect. Uh, def- uh, definitely, it has a chilling effect, not only sa media, but in the entire advertising advertising industry. Kasi, I mean, uh, no one... I, I personally didn't imagine na darating tayo sa point na isa shutdown talaga na ng Kongreso ni Duterte yung ABS-CBN. I thought the government was just asking for concessions at first sa ABS-CBN. But, uh, but I, we were, uh, ako personally, I was surprised that uh, that Duterte was able. I mean, let, let, me, uh, let me say it straight kasi I really felt that it was really Duterte uh, who is the elephant in the room? It was Silly Duterte who orchestrated this. No matter what Cayetano uh, said, di ba? No matter the presumption na na-separate yung Congress. So, so kapag kasi nagsama-sama yung ginawa ng administration sa Inquirer, sa Rappler, and sa EBS-CBN, this will really send a strong, a strong message sa media it will really chill them. Magkakaroon talaga ng chilling effect, basically. Kasi nagdodoble. Parang hindi, uh, the fact na natouch nila yung pinaka, num- yung number one, pinakamalaking uh, station dito sa Pilipinas, no one is untouchable anymore after after what happened to ABS-CBN. Although, of course, we, we agree that that totoo naman na the, the government, the state, and the media have this uh, yung relationship nila hindi naman dapat kailangan harmonious pero i i really felt that at this particular instance excessive na yung yung nangyaring uh, flexing ng muscle ng government against the media hindi lang sa ABS Emil sabi mo kasi may chilling oh, definitely may chilling effect di ba pero hindi ba posible rin na reverse yung yung maging mangyari that media would be more discerning, mas mas tututukan nila ang mga maling ginagawa ng gobyerno. Kasi nangyayari na nga ito, mas magiging palaban sila. Baka naman, timbis na maging takot ang media, mas tumapang dahil wala na po nga. Kung yung pinakamalaki, pinahasara, paano pa tayo? Hindi ba posible yun? Well, the, well, ako, I felt natatapang sila after this. But it doesn't erase the fact that uh, the, the reach of ABS-CBN uh, significantly dis- decreased after this, di ba? Y- yung reach no, no, nila sa no, tapang. No, no, no. Hindi ABS-CBN. Kasi pinag-uusap natin chilling effect on other media institutions. Okay, ang sinasabi mo, tata- wag mo na yung, yung ABS-CBN, but yung other media institutions. Kung may chilling effect sa kanila, on their... Uh, as, as defenders of the press. Hindi ba posible na mas imbes na matakot sila dahil baka ipasara rin sila o ipapatay o ipakulong o kasuhan eh mas tumapang dahil nga sa mga nangyayari? Well, katulad nga ng answer ko kanina, di ba? I felt that uh, they will step up. Step up, di ba? They will try to fill the void but that it doesn't erase the fact that there's already a void. There's already a void left by by what happened to ABS-CBN. Okay, may tatapang at some point magpuflex sila ng muscle pero na, na it doesn't erase the fact na na, uh, na nawalan sila ng ng isang institusyon katulad ng ABS-CBN to check 
uh, the excesses of the government. Now, eto bang mga media na natira, do they have the the same reach and capacity as ABS-CBN? So, yes, pwede lang tumapang, pero it doesn't erase the fact na diminish na after what happened to ABS-CBN, yung kapangyarihan ng media sa Pilipinas to check the abuses or the excesses of the government. Okay. Also, you had another point doon, Sir John, no? Uh, media okay. organizations uh, are still business, eh. so hindi lang hindi lang ano eh, hindi lang sa press freedom. Eh. Maraming uh, pwedeng uh, face yung pwedeng atakihen, no? Hindi ka man atakihen like uh, sa side ng ginawa kay ABS or kay Maria Reza or kay Wire. Attacks could come from anywhere, de ba? Like kay Rappler. Uh, isang private individual yung nag, nag, nagstampa ng kaso sa ABS, sa franchise nila, uh, tax, tax yung ginamit sa inquirer before. No, ang daming ways to, to do the attacks. No? And uh, sabi nila, nung, nila diba, Maria Reza, it's a thousand cuts. Diba? It won't kill you right away, but it will uh, make you bleed to death no? because of the, those thousand cuts. Kaya, kaya, uh, for me, yung chilling effect ay uh, hindi siya on the surface, no? hindi siya laging mararamdaman. Pero on, on the economic front, for sure, dahil mga negosyo to, uh, mag, medyo magbaback off sila. No? Kahit gaano katatapang yung mga, mga reporters mo. Like in the case of Inquirer, hindi yung Inquirer yung nagbigay ng, ng, ano, ng, ng statement. Nilinaw nila doon na reporters of Inquirer. Diba? Because they want mm. to separate those people from the business of inquiry itself. So, okay, yeah, I agree with I that. Would like... uh, okay. Wait lang, wait lang. Wait. I agree with that kasi feeling ko hindi dito matatapos yung banat sa ABS-CBN. Inumpisa ka, yun nga, the reason why the Committee on Good Government was co-leading the inquisition of ABS-CBN kasi may second punch pa to. Ang second punch sa ABS-CBN, yung mga negosyo ng mga lopeses. Yung First Philippine Holdings, FGEN, Binanata na yan, simulan ni Mike Defensor, hindi ba? Dahil uh, eh, ito, isipin mo lang kung sabi lang ng gobyerno na ang Meralco at ang mga kooperatibo ang bumili ng kuryente dito sa mga mga producers ng, ng Lopeses. Problema ang malaki yan para sa kanila, hindi ba? At mukhang yun yung second punch ng nagagawin ng, 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 ng kongreso dito. Uh, Emil, you were saying? Yes. Uh, I just want to share, sir, kasi uh, personally, uh, first, I gave benefit of the doubts dun sa nangyari sa Inquirer. I also gave benefit of the doubts sa nangyari kay, kay Rappler. In fact, tama si Maria Reza kasi there is really a veneer of legality on what is happening sa kanila, di ba? But after, dito sa nangyari sa ABS-CBN, given the totality of the circumstances uh, and yung ripple effect niya, I can really say that four years, five years into the terms of President Duterte, we are already sailing a very dangerous water in terms of our democracy, in terms of our freedom of the press, even in terms of the stability of our institutions. After up four to five years, after President Duterte. Ayon. Okay. Oh, uh, Rigel, si Emil and Jack talk about you chilling effect sa 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 press hindi ba is there other is there other uh, industries or may may, may pa ba bang epekto itong pag pag shutdown ng ABS-CBN you were talking um, earlier about advertising and uh, yung mga empleyado and that stuff uh, I think yes sir I mean I think it's a given na uh, it's going to affect um, a lot of things um, um, in certain negative ways, especially in knowing that ABS-CBN is probably one of the biggest companies that that is existing in um, in the Philippines. And not just that, not just the fact that it's one of the biggest companies, it's also one of the biggest influences in the Philippines. Right? So I think that it only it only i don't want to say that it's completely negative because i think that because um because of what's happening currently to abs cbn it has become a spark to something that is 
I don't know what to call it right now. Pero I think that the people are trying to notice that there is a certain pattern into what is going on. And I don't want to declare anything. Uh, I don't want to give it a name. Pero the thing is Raijan, that... Raijan, the, Raijan. Raijan. Uh, halimbawa, nung, hindi ka lang kung inabutan mo na to. Naghang ba siya? Ay, hindi ko alam kung inabutan, hindi ko alam kung inabutan mo to. Pero nung panahon ni Erap, ipinasara niya yung Manila Times. Well, hindi talaga si Erpa nagpasara. But what uh, the final uh, blow to Manila Times was binoycott siya ng mga, ng mga mga advertisers that are sympathetic to Erap. Yung sila lusutan. Siyempre, yun nga, sinasabi kang ni Jeff, hindi ba? So, do you think itong galit ni Duterte, may epekto to sa ABS-CBN that advertisers would also leave ABS-CBN? I don't know how advertisers are going to leave ABS-CBN, um, especially that um, it's the network itself is uh, non-existent. But I think that um, companies are becoming more conscious on what they are going to go for. Not not just conscious in a way that it's going on a on one way, but I think it's going on two ways, especially. Um, I we um, I we can vouch for um, Lego sardines for having this um, su- sort of like sub um, like hidden messaging in their ad in, in their current advertising, especially recently. Um, also in um, also uh, I I can I can't think of anything else right now. But the thing is that it's going both ways and not just one way. Wherein they're trying to avoid the controversy. Some private companies are actually trying to address the uh, the controversy and I couldn't blame them for that because it also garners attention for themselves. Okay, thank you. Oh, Jack, so sabi nila, where, where, where do we go from here? Uh, wag mo natin discuss kung yung, yung magkakapangkisa pa ba ang ABS-CBN. Pero people are also saying that this could be a blessing in disguise. Na uh, posible mas papabilis yung, yung paglipat natin ng mga tao from free TV to subscription to internet and the way we do entertainment. Do you think ito ba yun? Ito ba? Mas, kasi ito ah, Nag-release ang GMA7 ng survey saying tumaas yung kanilang reach nag 47%. Dati ata para mga 41, 42 lang yon. Naging 47 and then the the biggest competitor TV5 is 2.5. Ito yung talagang totally shut down ng ABS. Although hindi pa lang siya totally shut down because they're, they're still on cable, they're still on the internet, they're still operating pero on a limited reach. Pero ito nga yung GMA7, 47% na 47%, hindi pa rin no, yung 50% hindi naman lumipat sa kanila. They did not garner like 90 or 80% of, of viewership. Ibig sabihin, nanonood, nandun pa rin sa, sa ABS-CBN yun. Ito ba yun? Ito ba? Mas, mas bibilis ba? Yung paglipat natin from free TV to, to watching shows online or Netflix type ABS-CBN app? What do you think? Well, I think po, no, uh, we're going there. no And yung I want TV, yung mga YouTube channels kaya nagkaroon na ng mga YouTube influencers na we're, we're getting there pero um, as to ha- how far and how fast we can get there hindi ko pa masyadong makita no kasi it, it it will be depends on a lot of factors eh. no una yung internet penetration rate yung speed ng internet no siguro sa mga highly urbanized areas that could be a possibility no kasi it's cheaper now to, to have a high-speed internet. Eh, pero, sobrang limited lang din ng mga areas na meron yun. Diba? And, the advertising cost there ay uh, targeted yun eh. So, hindi hindi ganun ka uh, laki eh. Kasi, yung yung, uh, yung revenue ng, advertise, ng, mga, ng advertising will depend on the reach. Diba? Nang ng, ng mga audience. So, kapag nasa free-to-air TV ka, so, uh, wala kang barrier ng subscription, wala kang barrier ng uh, paper, uh, pay-per-view or paywall na tinatawag nila. So, possible, no, na kapag ka naghanap ng, ng naumay sa, sa content ng free TV itong mga Pilipino, and baka maging open din sila sa subscription. So, nangyayari na ngayon yan sa, sa Netflix, diba? There are a lot of Filipinos na naging Netflix. Actually, yung KBO ng ABS-CBN, it's not entirely free. You have to pay 30 pesos for it to, to, to work. So, 
Pero, ayun nga, nasa free, free signal pa rin siya. No? Filipinos will have to pay for the internet now if they want to consume content on top of the price ng subscription fee. So, Jeff, Jeff. Give it a, mm, People are also talking a, about, for, for example, people are also talking about a merger between a telco and ABS-CBN. For example, maybe Globe or Smart, and then Globe airs out the, the content of ABS-CBN. Possibly ba yun? Actually, would, that, that, would that be possible business-wise? Kikita ba ang ABS doon? Well, it, it happened in the past. Nagkaroon ng ABS-CBN Mobile. It's a partnership between Globe and ABS-CBN, and they shut it down. No, so that that ABS even mobile uses uh, Globe's network, no, precisely for that purpose. Pero so that business model didn't work. Yeah, no, unfortunately, no. So ang ang nakikita kong possible na evolution ay yun nga yung parang Netflix type, yung yun yung uh, uh, trajectory na pinupuntahan ng i1 TV. No, na you pay for uh, a subscription fee and you. Uh, you are uh, exposed or uh, you have those contents na exclusive for ABS-CBN. So, pero sa pri- pricing wise and internet wise, baka, uh, yun nga, it will be limited sa reach ng, ng internet, ng high speed internet sa Pilipinas and that's like only for highly urbanized areas and that's so limited in reach and uh, capacity. No? Kasi hindi rin ganun ka lakas yung infrastructure ng, 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 ng mga cell sites ng mga telco sa buong Pilipinas. Eh. So, we're just around, I think, 15,000, 17,000 cell sites for 105 million Filipinos compared to 96,000 cell sites ng Indonesia uh, na merong 150 million population. So, medyo, medyo dun pala ang kita na natin kung gaano kalaki yung kailang habulin when it comes to infrastructure sa, sa telco. In order for that to realize na uh, we consume our content purely on the internet, di ba? So, kaya sobrang importante din nung, nung uh, uh, tawag ito, nung franchise na yun. At, sir, dyan mayroon isang opportunity dyan. Kasi nung ano? dinigitalize natin yung TV, nagkaroon ng uh, mar- sa isang frequency lang, nagkaroon ng maraming program na pwedeng ipalabas. So, Black box. Yes, to that black box, no. So, maraming frequency ang nabakante. Yung tinatawag natin to na ano, na mantawag dito, uh, white space. Tama ba? White space. White space. So, so that can be used for internet, no? Uh, ang tawag doon uh, ay 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 hindi ko maalala pero I think it's white space signal. Na it's a it's a frequency uh, allocated for TV before, but now it can be used for uh, internet, no? So but does does sorry for my ignorance, Jeff. So does that mean kung dahil na bakante yung frequency ng ABS CBN at hindi ito ibibigay sa kahit kanino, pwede tong gamitan for internet. Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Okay. Ibang frequency pa po 'yon, ibang band. So itong ba- merong isang merong isang uh, group ng band na allocated lang for uh, digital terrestrial TVs. No, so nandoon okay. andoon yung mga signal ng ng ABS-CBN and there's TV networks. And merong isa pang part ng frequency band na pwedeng gamitin for internet. So yun yung wide space mm-hmm. na tinatawag. Okay, uh, thank you, Jack. Emil, pero yung so, story niyan, Sir John, kasi in order for ABS even to do that, they also need a franchise. 'Di ba? So they, if they want to do, do that as a telco, they also need a franchise from the Congress. Okay. Basta talaga tech, medyo talagang gungho si Jeff, eh, no? Pag tech ang pinag-uusapan. Anyway, Emil, so what's next for ABS-CBN? We were talking here of uh, kahapon, nung nag sa first part one natin, sinabi ko na posible pa rin mag-file within the same Congress. Kaya lang, kung tinanggal ng Kongreso na to, bakit pa, bakit pa nila papayagan yung another franchise? Ang sinabi ko doon, is precisely because may nagkaka-interest dito sa, sa, sa frequency ng ABS-CBN at mukhang ibib- kung ibibigay doon, may mababakanting ibang frequency, di ba? So, ang tanong ko, people are also saying, let's wait for 2022. What do you think about this, Emil? Actually, maraming, uh, maraming complications. Uh, new ones yan, sir. Kasi may nagsasabi na, na pwede kasi ibigay ng government yung channel 2 sa ibang company. And so and once na naibigay yung franchise na yung sa ibang company come 2022, wala na. syempre wala na kasi it's already vested rights. 
although franchise naman is a uh, is a privilege from the state is still kapag nag uh, binigay na yung sa isang company may may somehow may property rights na dun yung company yung company so wa, wala wala na matitira ay hindi na makukuha yun ng ABS CBN now uh, ABS CBN can get the other uh, frequencies di ba pwede p- tapos pwede rin sila mag black time sa channel 9 sa channel 5 channel 5 or they just they may want to uh to stick with their current current cable operation di ba technically doon na lang sila nag-ooperate ngayon pero napaka-limited niyan in terms of reach in terms of advertising revenue but again sinabi mo nga sir di ba ibebenta ba to ng ABS CBN ibebenta ba to ng mga locals di ba mukhang hindi naman at least, ah, at least from our perspective, kasi... I mean, that's... Oh, sige, okay, you discuss us op, that option, hindi ba? So, either mm-hmm. today, magpal, magpal pa rin, or, or tw- hintayin na matapos ang term ni Duterte, unless another Duterte becomes president. Mm-hmm. Pero, yung isa pang option na sinasabi nila is people's initiative. So, ano to? Is this, is this really feasible? Of course, ah... Uh wala pa talagang successful uh, people's initiative attempt na, na nangyari sa history natin at least dun sa level ng uh, ng congress para at the level of the statutes de ba uh, of course they can always try people's initiative and given the current technologies in terms of e-signatures in terms of collecting digital data baka mas madali ngayon de ba but of course they can they can always do that. That's always an option sa ABS-CBN. And of course, sa kalaban ng ABS-CBN, they also have the option to, to question that sa Supreme Court. Is is the uh, is the law on people's initiative applicable on private laws? Diba? May mga nagsasabi from the, from the side of, of President Duterte na uh, the people's initiative law uh, does not apply to private laws like franchise, di ba? So, but ako, I, I, I see na gagawin pa rin siya ng ABS-CBN. So, of course, uh, they have to make an effort. Uh, to, uh, they have to at least uh, show something. Uh, so, as a student of law, do you think it's it's a it's a valid option? Because some, so, some of our friends, some of our friends are saying hindi daw, hindi daw always, uh, For me, uh, for me, sir, it's always a valid option because remember that uh, people, uh, all power emanates from the people, and people's initiative is the direct exercise of power of the people. Diba? So, Correct. so in terms of the, uh, in terms of preference, or in terms of, although hindi, hindi to legal, ah, but uh, philosophically speaking, in terms of the exercise of power, mas, 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 mas dapat binibigyan ng bigat ang people's initiative more than sa pag-act ng mga repos- ng, ng Congress ng mga representatives on creating laws, di ba? Kasi it is the direct action of the people. So, these are the philosophical nuances on the issues that can be litigated before the Supreme Court, di ba? Thank you, Emil. Last questions to Kael and Rigel because you are the future. Where do we go for, for, from here? What's next for ABS-CBN? Uh, you were talking earlier na that this is a cause for concern, pero Anong, anong dapat gawin? I really don't know why this is happening, to be honest. But I don't know if this is a diversion. Hindi ko alam if kahit lang yun ang bias sila. Although that's backfiring or they're having a bigger plan. And the youth needs to prepare for that through keeping an eye towards politics. And even though that pan- the pandemic is such a nightmare for everybody, I think this is a good opportunity to awaken the, the next generation for what's coming next. Okay. Thank you, Carl. Rajan. As for the, the future of ABS-CBN, um, I think they're pretty much confident um, with themselves. Like, I, as in, I think that uh, they are still on a level that is very much cool or calm about the situation. That whatever the government is asking is asking them to do, they comply with reserve, uh, comply with um, respectful um, opposition. Uh, I think it's because it has happened to them before and that they can technically afford this kind of um, negative thing that is happening to them right now. But as for the future of everything else, as for the future of their competitors, of their natural 
natural competitors. I think that um, especially um, other big companies who would like to um, question the actions of the president, I think instead of being more resistant to it, I think they will be more compliant because of what they think, uh, what is ha- what they saw happen to ABS, ABS, CBN, especially because of because ABS, ABS, CBN's competitors technically cannot afford. That's how big ABS, CBN is, and that is the gap between the competitors of ABS, CBN and ABS, CBN itself. Um, pero I think this is a good opportunity to to turn our heads to not the main in um not the main media, mainstream media that we have to turn our heads to more independent creators and their point of views, especially to artists nowadays who try to um, try to voice out their concerns about the government in a much more pre- in, in a much more active way, especially in social media. So I think I think in a in a sense it gives more opportunity for independent creators to be heard. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Salahat. Anyway, uh, to end this, sabi nga natin, is this an assault to press freedom? Uh, yes, of course, it's an assault to press freedom. Pero sana, ang inihiling ko, when, when Inquirer was being assaulted, when Rappler was being assaulted, ABS-CBN should have spoken, di ba? Hindi ngayon na kung sila lang yung binibira, tsaka lang sila sumisigaw ng, ng press freedom. Dahil hindi sila ang una. Pangalawa, does, it, does this have chilling effect? Yes, hindi lang sa press, hindi lang sa mga tao, hindi, hindi, hindi lang dahil yung sa environment ng tokhang pero this is also an effect on the on 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 direct investment on foreign direct investment what kind of regulatory uh, environment do we want kaganto na parang pag napaginitan ka ng gobyerno uh, basta basta ka na lang mawawala and then lastly uh, yeah the future is uh, still unfolding we don't know what will happen and sabi ko nga hindi to ang una ulit at gusto ko lang sabihin that I also forgot to say this in, in, the, in our first briefer yesterday. This is the part two. Uh, I'm a sco- full disclosure. I, I was a scholar of ABS-CBN Foundation. At sinabi ko to sa mga posts ko before sa social media that si Jason sa pamismo yung nag-interview sa akin when I was accepted. At yung, yung foundation isn't just a puchu-puchu foundation na magbibigay lang ng pera and all that. It's, it's a... It's a complete package kasi hindi lang tuition fee ang covered. You have a monthly monthly allowance, you have a clothing allowance, you have a book allowance. So talagang tutulungan ka. And that's what got me by sa, through college. So malaki. Kaya uh, I'm partisan on this issue. But at the same time, uh, I call it out kung tingin ko may mali at uh, sa patingin ko, uh, yun. So para lang malinaw. Again, Sir, maraming salamat. I hope you enjoy. Sir, uh, before you end, uh, may gusto may gusto lang akong sabihin. Although, okay. Before you end, uh, kasi although uh, ngayon lang kasi nag-do- nag-don sa akin, kasi siguro nakita natin dito sa pandemic kung paano ginamit ni President Duterte itong pandemic na to as an opportunity diba uh, to further its interest ginamit niya yung pandemic to pass to railroad the, the anti-terror law ginamit niya yung pandemic to to basically shut down ABS-CBN although I recognize yung nangyayari na to na to na grabe pero uh, I will be a pessimist here pero ang nakikita ko is that uh this will be basically the same as Tokhang. I mean, people uh, did not approve of Tokhang, di ba? But they will, they still support President Duterte. And I think that is the challenge, di ba? At in, in two years, two since two years na lang President Duterte, will, will it impact him? I will be a pessimist here. I, I don't know sa ano mo. Uh, I don't know sa opinion mo, sir. Pero ang, ang view ko dito is that it's basically the same pattern as Tokang, di ba? Kaya pinatay ang ABS-CBN, may mga uh, collateral damages na uh, hindi, eh, hindi approved ng mga Pilipino yung, yung Tokang, even yung closure ng ABS-CBN. Pero at the, at the end of the day, they will still support President Duterte. So I, I guess my question sa you, sir, is that how long should people handle this? Parang how, how can we uh, how can we move forward from this, di ba? Sa akin, I think that's for another podcast that we discuss and dissect the Teplonish uh, aura of uh, President Duterte. What makes him? Uh, what makes people stick to him, regardless of the difference of opinion? Anyway, so yon that that concludes our podcast. Maybe you you could wait for that uh, for another time. 
and uh, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, don't forget to like this video, check our other videos, and then ring the bell. And then for, um, uh, lo look for our other social media accounts, the Naked Politics Podcast. Thank you and goodbye.